Hey there folks and welcome back. I have one more example for you today on the change of variables formula and this is an interesting one. It shows that sometimes the process of transforming an integral with the change of variables formula can be a little bit more involved than what you've seen in the last couple examples, particularly when you're dealing with some more complicated curves in R2. So in this example, we are trying to evaluate the double integral over r of the function y squared over x cubed, where r is this region on the right. You can see that it's bounded between four curves, y equals x squared, y equals 2x squared, y equals 1 over x squared, and y equals 3 over x squared. Now, from the picture, we can tell that this region is neither type 1 nor type 2. So perhaps we can use a change of variables to transform R into a more friendly region. We're going to use the same strategy as in the last video. We're going to look for expressions involving x and y that are bounded between constants. We'll then define our new variables u and v to be those expressions involving x and y. And that will allow us to transform R into a rectangle. So looking at our parabolas, y equals x squared and y equals 2x squared, I could rewrite these curves as y over x squared equals 1 and y over x squared equals 2, respectively. Likewise, with my hyperbolas, I could rewrite these equations as x squared y equals 1 and x squared y equals 3. Ah, so maybe it makes sense to set u to be y over x squared and set v to be x squared y. If we do this, u is going to be bounded between 1 and 2, v is going to be bounded between 1 and 3. I think it's a good strategy. Let's try computing the Jacobian on the next slide. Okay, we've come up with a transformation to simplify our region R. We're going to set u equal to y over x squared and v equal to x squared y. We know from our change of variables formula that we're going to need the Jacobian partial xy over partial uv. But right now we have u and v expressed in terms of x and y. So it's probably going to be easier to start by finding this inverse Jacobian, partial uv over partial xy. We'll invert our result at the end. This inverse Jacobian is given by the determinant of this matrix of partial derivatives. So we should start by computing these partials. Partial u over partial x is going to be minus 2y over x cubed. Partial v by partial x will be 2xy. Partial u by partial y is going to be 1 over x squared. And partial v by partial y is x squared. Evaluating this determinant, we find that our inverse Jacobian is given by minus 2y over x minus 2y over x. That's minus 4y over x. Okay, great. Our actual Jacobian, partial xy over partial uv, is going to be the reciprocal of this expression, 1 over partial uv over partial xy. That's minus x over 4y. Since we know that we're going to need the absolute value of this expression to use in our integral formula, we might as well take it now. Let's think about this. The region R over which we're trying to integrate is located in the first quadrant of R2, right? So both x and y are positive, and hence this expression, minus x over 4y, is negative. So when I take the absolute value of partial xy over partial uv, that's the absolute value of minus x over 4y, that's simply x over 4y. Ah, now this is actually kind of interesting. In our last couple examples, the Jacobian was a constant, right? But now it's an expression depending on x and y. What this means is that the distortion in area caused by our transformation isn't uniform. There are certain areas of the plane where we experience more or less distortion. This isn't something that's new to us. When we converted to polar coordinates, we found that our Jacobian was rho. It wasn't a constant there either. So it's not a problem to have a non-constant Jacobian, but we do need to be careful. If this expression is going to be used in an integral involving u and v, well, we shouldn't have x's and y's at the end of the day. We're going to have to convert this into some expression involving just u's and v's. I'm going to show you two ways that you can go about doing this. Here's where we are so far. 
We've defined new variables u and v in terms of x and y. We calculated the Jacobian of this transformation and showed that it's equal to x over 4y in absolute value. We'd now like to use the change of variables formula to put everything together and rewrite our integral as a double integral involving u and v. The problem though is that currently everything here is expressed in terms of x and y. One option for getting around this is to invert the transformation. Rather than writing u and v in terms of x and y, we're going to try to use these expressions to write x and y in terms of u and v. Now folks, there's no trick for making this work every time. As Ms. Frizzle says, you may have to take chances, make mistakes, and get messy. So I'm going to start with one of the equations, see if I can clean it up, and use it in the other equation. From the first equation, we have that u equals y over x squared. So if I move the x squared up, I could write y as u times x squared. Ah, maybe I could use that expression for y in my equation for v. In the second equation, I have v equals x squared y. So in other words, v equals x squared times u x squared. That's u times x to the 4. Now we have an equation that involves just x and u and v. So I'm going to move everything except x to the other side to get x to the 4 equals v over u. Ah, and now I can take the fourth root of both sides to get x equals the fourth root of v over u. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Zach, isn't it dangerous to divide by u here? What if we're accidentally dividing by 0? Well, don't worry, we're not. u is between 1 and 2. There's no danger here. Now you might also be thinking, oh, but Zach, what about taking the fourth root? If we take the fourth root, shouldn't we have plus or minus here? Well, again, not quite. Remember from our first slide that our region R lives in the first quadrant, so x is going to be positive. When we take the fourth root, we only get the positive root, not plus or minus. Okay, crisis averted. We've now expressed x in terms of u and v, and we're going to try to do the same with y. We know that y is u times x squared, so that's u times the fourth root of v over u squared. When I square my fourth root, I just get a square root, and this expression is going to simplify to root uv. Ah, awesome. We've expressed x and y in terms of u and v, and now we're ready to rewrite our integrand, rewrite our Jacobian, and use our change of variables to rewrite our integral. When we convert to u's and v's, we have the integral from 1 to 2 times the integral from 1 to 3. Our integrand is going to be the square root of uv squared. That's our y. I'm going to replace x with the fourth root of v over u cubed. And then finally, I have the absolute value of the Jacobian. The fourth root of v over u divided by 4 times the square root of uv. Now, I know this looks ugly, but I promise everything simplifies very nicely. Your integral is going to evaluate to 3 quarters. So there you go, folks. This is one method for rewriting your integral given a non-constant Jacobian. Let me show you another little trick on the next slide. We've just seen that inverting a transformation can sometimes involve a fair bit of work. But what other choice do we have? I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to have to write this integral in terms of just u and v. So we shouldn't have any x's or y's in our Jacobian or integrand. Well, sometimes you'll get lucky. Sometimes just by looking at the Jacobian, or just by looking at the integrand, you'll be able to see how to rewrite these expressions in terms of u and v. If you can do that, fantastic! Rewrite your expressions, plop them into your integral, and solve. In some examples like this one, however, that might not be so easy. Looking at the expressions x over 4y and y squared over x cubed, it's not at all obvious to me how to rewrite these in terms of u and v. Ah, oh, so do we have to solve that system of equations on the last slide? Well, not necessarily. There's one other trick that might come to your rescue. If you can't see how to rewrite these expressions separately, you can always try putting them in the integral first as expressions involving x and y. Sometimes there will be some cancellation, and then you will be able to see how to rewrite your term. Let's give it a try here. I'm going to replace the absolute value of this Jacobian with this expression above. That'll give me the integral from 1 to 2 
of the integral from 1 to 3 of y squared over x cubed times x over 4y dv du. It looks like there's some cancellation here. We can throw out a y and we can throw out an x. Pulling out the constant term, we have 1 quarter times the integral from 1 to 2 of the integral from 1 to 3 of y over x squared dv du. Uh, now here's the magic, folks. y over x squared is exactly u. I can see how to rewrite this expression in terms of my new variables without inverting the transformation. So I get 1 quarter times the integral from 1 to 2 of the integral from 1 to 3 of u dv du. Just like before, this integral will evaluate to 3 quarters. Now this method is very fast when it works, but sometimes it won't. Even after the substitution, it could be the case that you can't easily see how to rewrite your expression. In that case, inverting the transformation may be your only option.